All right, guys, it is finally complete. The Apocalypse Berg set number 70840 uh, is finally finished. I just built this. Uh, I finished it off at 3 a.m. last night. So uh, there's the box on this side. Uh, so I kind of just took a quick power nap. It's, I think, like 9 a.m. now. And I'm fresh, and I can talk about the set. It is absolutely impressive probably for this thumbnail i think i'm just gonna maybe crop in some extra black on the sides but anyways this thing is absolutely huge and we got a ton of figures i'm really happy to say that uh the figures most of them are i think exclusive to this set so that's going to make a lot of them pretty collectible the quality of those characters are so awesome but really there are about a million and a half things to talk about for the Apocalypse Berg, or sorry, welcome to Apocalypse Berg. I'm gonna get into all the details. I'll start from the top and work my way down, but I first wanna say thank you to the Lego group for sending this set over to us for a review. These are the really, really special ones, uh, and this is just such an amazing one, so thanks a lot, guys. And actually, I think I'm gonna start off talking about the figs. First things first is Batman here. I thought this was gonna be the same Batman figure that we got from the much, much smaller set uh, from this first wave of LEGO Movie 2 sets, but that's not the case. This guy's actually exclusive and pretty different. A lot of the printing is different. He's got dual molded arms and dual molded legs, which is also uh, a difference here, but we really do get that same awesome armor piece with the sort of rubber attached to the shoulder pauldrons. We have a new mold for a tattered cape and it's kind of hard to see what all the printing looks like. So let me take off most of the stuff. And now you can see a little bit better the full print from the front. I feel like the torso piece is actually the same uh, as maybe the other Batman, but look, he's got tons of uh, printing on the arms to show lots of armor on either side. It's a little bit different on this side from the other, which is cool. This is what he looks like from the back with his alternate expression. And ultimately, uh, Batman is looking pretty awesome. I'm, I'm glad that he's exclusive here, uh, but we actually got some other DC guys and gals, of course. This is Harley Quinn, which is, uh, I mean, wow, look at her. This is something that I think is a lot closer to maybe what Harley Quinn would have looked like from the movie Suicide Squad. This is kind of a modern, updated version of her and the detailing for her is really, really awesome. She's got dual molded legs for red and blue, which is, uh, I thought they were gonna be tan when you see it, but no, she's just got tan printing that goes along the side of either to sort of show those like fishnet short shorts. So yeah, this really is kind of like the Suicide Squad version of her. She's got, uh, what is that? Daddy's little monster, of course, on her shirt there. And let's see what her alternate expression looks like. She's got a special print. Uh, for the bat, those diamonds on the bat, I like that they're kind of infused metal sort of bolts plated in there. That looks good. This is her alternate expression. Awesome. Really, really happy with the way Harley Quinn looks. It'd be really cool if we got a Joker that looked the same way or was themed the same way. But either way, super cool fig. And then finishing off DC is Green Lantern. I never thought I would like really want to see sort of a post-apocalyptic version of Green Lantern because honestly he's not like one of my favorite DC characters, but now that I've got him, now that they've uh, made him, oh man, he's like my favorite version of Green Lantern for sure. Look at him. He's got sort of the chain that comes along the front that you can see would be holding on to this uh, sort of Boba Fett uh, shoulder cape. In fact, that might actually be the same piece that Boba Fett has. Um, as a minifig, he's got dual molded legs, pretty simple printing on the back, and then he's got some printing on one arm. Does he have it on the other? Let me check. His other arm is actually totally bare, and it doesn't, no. It doesn't look like he's got any printing there. It's just a tan arm. Uh, but really, really fun printing, especially from the front here. This shoulder armor piece is my new favorite one because it's just so simple. It's come out on several other figs. And boom, he's got an alternate expression that's super goofy. Like, it just looks so weird. Like, eh, I don't know. I, I like, I just love the all, all this because he's sort of the serious, kind of odd and intimidating version of Green Lantern being in the post-apocalypse, but then he's got this super goofy face. All right, now we've got Scribble Cop. As far as I can tell, this is the only version of uh, Scribble Cop from the Lego Movie 2 sets so far. Remember, there's probably gonna be a wave two for these sets later in the year. 
I've got a feeling, but amazing. He's got sort of that old style, like biker or greasers uh, leather jacket. Uh, he's got an extra belt, of course, because that's what people have multiple belts in the post apocalypse, like always. Oh, that is a biker jacket. Look at that. He's got sort of a, a skull and crossbones version of what that insignia would look like. Um, really cool little shoulder pauldrons. That piece is actually getting a lot more common after this wave, which I like. It was pretty rare before. Uh, there's his one expression and his scribble angry face. Great. Remember, he is still called Scribble Cop because it's the same Scribble Cop from last movie. Awesome fig, let's move on. Here is a really interesting guy. This is the surfer dude, uh, or he looks like a surfer dude. He actually comes with some surfboards I'll show you later uh, in the review. This is Chainsaw Dave. Uh, the chainsaw, I think, gives it away, but he looks better. Uh, actually, he's got a lot of really good details. Uh, you can see he's got his messed up uh, old Hawaiian, um, you know, I can't remember the name of that flower, but those are the board shorts or his swimsuit that he's wearing. Uh, with the sort of skull and crossbones thing going along his chest. He's got a tattoo of a chainsaw and what looks like sharks or maybe that's just swirly lines. And then a broken surfboard. Great tattoos. Detailing is so good here, guys. Um, I think that's a D. That's like an embroidered D on the, um, the center part where those straps meet in the middle and his alternate expression is kind of a serious face and there's his kind of angrier face really 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 good looking guy though i mean just in terms of a quality print and then let's move on to what's her name roxy roxy that's her name um this actually this print in the center has been used before let me turn the light back up i'm kind of playing around uh depending on what kinds of colors are included for these guys and gals but this print uh, has been included for other figs from other sets, at least for the torso, possibly the legs too, but definitely the face print is unique to Roxy. Um, this is what her alternate expression looks like. Really good printing though. I mean, Lego, I haven't mentioned the movie Mad Max yet, but huh, you can see some of the influences, I think pretty darn well, and you'll be able to see more of them with characters from this set, as well as from characters uh, in other sets from the wave. Now this is probably gonna be a lot of people's favorite fig from the set. This is the Where Are My Pants guy from that weird show. Well, apparently he's adapted himself pretty well to the end of the world, to the Apocalypse Berg universe. Uh, he's still got that funny sort of Hawaiian shirt. It's just got all these weird straps on it, dual molded legs with some toe printing and a knee pad. Uh, these are what the straps look like from the back and honestly with the blue and this hair especially kind of reminds me of Ash from uh, Army of Darkness or Evil Dead or Evil Dead 2 uh, if you understand the reference. He really does kind of just give an Ash vibe off. What he really needs is a chainsaw for a hand and maybe some pants but yeah anyways really really fun looking guy. I just like the the overall look for chainsaw guy. Sorry not chainsaw guy. Uh, where are my pants guy? And now you can really see that Mad Max influence. Uh, the face print here looks just like Furiosa's face print. We actually did a get a version of that from another set as well. This is Mohawk. Okay, yep, yeah, that's Mohawk. And I think here the torso and leg printing is exclusive to this character so far as I know. I, I did a quick look through from all the other Lego Movie 2 sets that we've got here in the studio and I haven't seen a version of her. She's got this weird spike thing. I can't tell if that's supposed to be sparks shooting out uh, from her weapon or if that's like a spike mace that she has. I'm not entirely sure. All I know is that this is a really fun looking post-apocalyptic character. And then don't let this mohawk fool you. Actually, let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, Cause this is Larry, the barista. We've gotten Larry before. We've seen Larry. This is the guy that is never amused by Emmett. Just doesn't like his character. He's kind of the jaded chip on his shoulder barista and I guess he's got sort of a reason to be jaded now that he is in the post-apocalypse so he's got just a nice printing on the back the shoulder pad printing here is brown sorry the uh the, the mold is brown for his uh armor on the side and let me take off that gas mask and now you can really see 
that disgruntled face of his. All right, let's move on from Larry. Now this is the last of the really unique guys that I like here, and he's not quite as unique as some of the other characters we saw because uh, I believe this chest piece has been used on another character from another set from this wave, but this is Fuse. Really, really nice looking from the front though. I think they managed to capture the look of this guy really well. Also, um, another reference to Army of Darkness, but doesn't this look like the blacksmith from Army of Darkness? I mean, minus the eye patch and the scar. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comment section below, but this is his awesome, awesome uh, print for his um, welding, welding helmet or welding mask. Really, really cool looking fuse. And let's see the last two characters. We've of course got our obligatory Lucy and Emmett. Um, the versions, sorry, the versions of these characters are not much different or any different, I don't think, from any of the characters, any of the times we see them in other sets from the same wave. So yeah, we've gotten this version of expressions from Emmett. You know, he looks a little bit worn down in the reflective printing you can see on his vest. But other than that, it's just same old Emmett. Lucy is a way cooler figure for this entire uh, Lego Movie 2 because she's got dual molded legs, way more printing. Uh, she just looks cool. She's got a new sort of uh, scarf piece that goes on top of the quiver. So that's actually a really cool thing. And the mold for her hair and goggles is great. Really cool version of both of these figs. And there you have it for all of the figs from the set. If you heard a little thing in that last clip, it's Ramon barging his way into the studio. But now let's get into the review of Apocalypse Berg. Now, I think I forgot to mention it in the beginning of the episode, but this is 3,178 pieces currently selling for 279.99 pounds in the UK and 299.99 US dollars or Euro. So uh, that's pretty understandable. I think in terms of a large set like this, generally speaking, anything that comes from a Lego movie, that being the first wave of Lego movie sets, Lego movie two sets, the Batman Lego movie, the Ninjago movie, generally speaking, those are all priced out pretty well. And that's the case here. This build from afar looks absolutely awesome. Let me just kind of give you a slow turnaround, but the Statue of Liberty honestly feels minifig scale. I don't really know for sure, uh, but huge, huge build for the Statue of Liberty. And there are details, details, details galore. Just like you got from the larger Lego Ninjago City sets, this is no different, if not more detailed than those ones. Maybe not, I don't know, it's about the same exact uh, quality and style. There's some really, really interesting build techniques. Um, as you might be able to guess, getting a side version, you know, the slanted Statue of Liberty to look the way she does uh, was not an easy task, I don't think, for the designers, but they pulled it off really well. Let's start from the top and move our way down. So really, really starting at the top, we're going to have the hand with the torch. There's so many fun details. I kind of want to spin this model around like, you know, more, but it's really hard to do it just with the size. So I am gonna take off a few little pieces here. This is the build for the flame. Really, like every little thing you see on this, uh, on this entire build is gonna be uh, pretty special, I think. The, the, the handrail banister around there just looks really good around the edge of the flame. And this is one of the first observation lookout areas. This is, I think, where you see Lucy Maybe uh, in the trailer, she's looking out somewhere around here. And it's pretty solid. Look, I can just push her down on this. And the entire internal frame of the arm, as you might be able to guess, is totally Technic. And then, yeah, let's actually twist some of this around so you can see what the rest of that looks like here. So there's a ladder that comes around along the back. And then there's a section, a second lookout tower base here. It's got a little windmill and there's chains that attach all the way down and more ladders so you can see uh, how you would be able, if you were a minifigure, to climb all the way up to the top of the Statue of Liberty arm. But we're not gonna go all the way down that section of the build. We are gonna focus on the face. Let's move this down a little bit. Now the Statue of Liberty head is one amazing aspect of the build. It's probably gonna be, I think, a lot of people's favorite bit, just because the detailing here is so much fun. It was really fun making the crown and all the shapes for the head. Uh, there's kind of these like sort of open bits here where you've got dark gray and there's light gray and there's a little bit of dark tan. 
and even some olive green. And all of that can be attributed to kind of wear and tear and rest. Remember, this is a post-apocalyptic version of the Lady of Liberty. So this all kind of makes sense, I think, to have a little bit of the exposed bits of connecting points for the Lady of Liberty, for the Statue of Liberty. So it all works, but the face detailing is great. We have those uh, hot dog pieces used as the top of the eyelids, and they're in sand green. Tons of pieces for sand green. That's really, really fun. With all these new pieces, you're definitely going to be able to make a Planet Express build, minifig scale, who knows, maybe someday. But there's a chill out room on the inside. Let's see if I can't angle the camera better. So what, this is what the uh, basic interior looks like. You've got a coffee mug in the back, a little printed tile piece that shows uh, you know, the Statue of Liberty. I think that's uh, Mayhem's alien, some other alien invaders. Uh, that is a little uh, lookout telescope piece. And then let me, let me angle this a little bit. This shows a, looks like a movie title. It says, Where Are My Pants? So that's the Where Are My Pants Guys movie. Uh, and I think that kind of looks like uh, Planet of the Apes, right? The font, that looks like a play on Planet of the Apes, especially with the fallen over Statue of Liberty though the image kind of gives me a Space Odyssey 2001 vibe. And then that other sticker is like a calendar, I think, since maybe the alien invaders have attacked and you can reattach the little cover piece to the head like this. Here is another one of the little observation lookout spots. It's got kind of a, a bigger, slightly more high powered looking telescope. And let's switch the whole thing around to the very first of the interior builds, like right here. This first little section is Lucy's hideout. You can take off the roof. There's a nice little build for a big cushy chair. This is one of the several of those older robot uh, little pieces kind of used. I think this is the just sort of leftover from the previous battle at the end of the last movie. Another observation, or possibly uh, actually just a megaphone, that is the megaphone piece, uh, water tower right there at the top and so that's how the roof works for here and then Lucy's got a bunch of stuff on the inside you can just take off the other roof tile piece um, and there's lots of little things to see here there is a sticker detailing that shows a house and there's uh, there's some fun stickers there's Emmett and Unikitty and this is her kind of memorabilia underneath her bed there's lots of things here there's a love letter from Batman which is funny a black lipstick piece another a uh, little Batman thing, some more sticker detailing, lots of things. I don't know if I can go into every single little detail here, but she's got a little keep out sign. This is a new element piece. It's used as a basketball hoop later. Another little spotlight. You see lots of these little lights all around the place and some mailboxes uh, with some little trinkets inside there as well. This says R1DCE. I don't know what that means. Boom, I like this little uh, cloth piece here that kind of helps you. Oop, there it goes. There goes that engine piece. And the cloth piece you can kind of uh, open and close. That's how you get in and out of Lucy's hideout. But anyways, that's her spot. Let's move on. And by move on, uh, I mean probably we should just take all of this off and move to the next section down. This is a combination of both the armory and a barber shop slash tattoo shop. So we're looking at the armory first, if you can't uh, tell what that's used for. This is a really interesting build for a door, kind of just swinging pick axes that are attached uh, with droid arms. And then on the inside, you can actually see uh, one of those old uh, robotic skeletons. There's some helmet pieces used. I like that. That's a nice sort of, uh, not chromed, but really shiny helmet. There's an ax on the inside, uh, some brick built interesting weird weapons so that's the armory and then the tattoo shop i think is pretty fun you've got a couple of the little skulls back there that with mohawk things this is the chair where you'd either be getting a tattoo or a haircut <laughs> depending on what you want little axe in the corner uh, and then there's another little chainsaw there assuming that's what they use to give haircuts here this is a really really fun door design though you've got the, uh, the scissors and that old school sort of little barber thing. I don't know what that thing's called, but they're pretty much always around for when, the, uh, when you've got a barber. So anyways, that's the build here. It's got another little scissor detailing on the outside. This says coffee unchained. Really, really fun pun here for the coffee shop down below. Newspapers, 
pipe detailing just so much. I mean, I can't stop just saying details. This entire review is just like, here's a detail, detail, detail. And now that we've gone through Lucy's hideout and uh, these two little sections, and I've shown off the Coffee Unchained, we might as well go to the bottom section here, which is a combination of the coffee shop as well as Scribble Cop's office. It's not really a police station, it's really just the office for Scribble Cop. So uh, let's check out the coffee shop first, just because that um, I think is probably one of everyone's favorite little sections here, the coffee shop. Uh, was a really fun sort of iconic scene from the first movie. It's been shown off in the trailer for the second one. Remember, as of the making of this review, we have not seen the movie. It's not out yet, but you can see a couple of different brews for different types of coffee in the back with some really fun sticker detailing. Let's just see if I can zoom in on that. So yeah, you can see the prices there. Maybe this is, yeah, one's hot coffee, one's, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what those symbols are exactly meant to mean. Maybe you can extrapolate upon them as you wish. There is a rat hanging out, it looks like, <laughs> on the inside. Uh, looks like the rat has probably eaten all of the pastries and biscuits. There's another little sticker detailing back here. And of course, the really, really, really overpriced coffee, as you might guess. Yeah, there you can see how you pay for it and uh, right, let's see if I can get it from another angle. So there we go, now we have a definitive answer as to what exactly uh, they serve. Croissants, spiders, a drumstick of some sort, and rat. Ooh, there we go, that's sort of, I feel like you can fit a Faulty Towers reference in there. And yeah, these are the doors, they're actually nice and clean cut, surprisingly. These are some stools, there's a nice little uh, umbrella if you wanna sip your coffee outside. A Couple of little sticker details to show uh, the coffee place on the outside. And now let's move over to the super secret police. That's that's what that sticker says. Tons of detailing, just love all the pipe detailing here. And then yes, this is Scribble Cop's office. This, this little microphone is actually on a ball joint here. So I'm just gonna move it out of the way. Um, yeah, and there we go. We've got Scribble Cop's jail, I guess. There's another little sticker showing that it's the police. And there's a trash can. See if we get it at another angle, right? Oh, and before I show you any of the details, there's actually almost no details on the inside here, but there is a fun function. You see this? It looked like a regular little pipe, but it is actually a chair flipping function. So it does look like uh, this is probably gonna be an action or part of a scene from the movie where a Scribble Cop is maybe interrogating somebody and he launches them either out of the room or he throws the chair out of the room or the person in the chair out of the room and let's get a little bit closer. There's a Harley Quinn little sticker down there. I think probably a wanted sign if I had a feeling. Maybe it's Harley Quinn he throws out. We will find out. There is actually another sticker, giant sticker detail on the inside of Scribble Cop's uh, office there, but I can't really get the angle right, so you're just gonna have to see it later if you ever get this set. I do really like the way this curves around, just the general look of this area is really, really nice. And this is a fun little build for a basketball hoop. That's that new little chain piece. The backboard build is really fun. And now we've started to move on to another section of the build. So this is Batman's little lair. It's not really even a lair. You've just got the bat merch. There's a few of those sticker boxes around this build. And then this has Batitude. So this might actually be the uh, end of one of his Batmobiles or one of his Bat vehicles sticking out the side of the Statue of Liberty in case he needs to use it. And then below that is a little overhang. Don't know what else to tell you about the details here. It looks like that's the edge of what used to be a car or a plane or a bus. There's some water or ice leaking out. And then let's move on to this next section. Actually, let's start off with the rooftop diner. This scene here is actually pretty fun. Uh, one of the things they serve here is a spear in a bun. Not a hot dog in a bun, but it's just a spear sticking straight out of a bun. Nice little build for a stool. And if you twist this, that's like a big speared sandwich. You can actually see the menu sticker over there. So they've got fries, a burger, yeah, and a spear in a bun. Uh, that's a relatively new printed piece to show a fried egg. It's just sitting, will it focus? It's just sitting loosely in the pan. Really nice little print though. Get a couple of those in this set. 
and there is the French fry deep fryer. And in case you couldn't see, it's one of those old crystal pieces used for mining and the deep fryer is powered by a V8 engine. Really, really fun rooftop diner and you can take it off to reveal the interior of the gym. Apologies if some of the interior isn't as easy to see here from this angle, but we do have a punching bag. It's set up in the same way that that gym punching bag was set up in the, uh, the downtown diner creator modular set, though it looks kind of like a Duplo fig. That is also a sticker that shows sort of an anti-alien invader, anti-Duplo figure. And there is the, uh, there's the dumbbell, sorry, the barbell. Uh, look at this thing. Hold on, let me see if I can, I kind of ripped the whole thing out. There's the bench that goes along with it, but this is what the, uh, this is what they're using as weights in the, uh, after apocalypse, the post apocalypse uh, living scene. It's a broom and it looks like there's a weight on one side. This is what the gym kind of looks like from the outside. Get a little bit of a better idea on what that would look like. And then we've got a spa, of course, right after you hit the gym, you might want to wash up or relax in the nice uh, sort of jacuzzi spa area. This could work as a ladder or they're just kind of vents. A lot of these are made from what look like old cars. You can still see steering wheels and pieces of cars there. But yeah, nice little build. You got a little uh, rubber ducky or a yellow frog to sort of show the rubber ducky. A little bit of water coming out of the, the faucet here. Kind of a fun little build. Tons of details though. Tons of details hidden underneath all the little crevices and cracks. That's a little soap bar. Tons of stuff here though. Really, really looks good, I think, from all angles. I'm not entirely sure what this build is here, but you can lift, actually this is for that, you can lift this up and inside is, I don't know what this is, but it's probably a reference to a scene, but there is a arm of a skeleton and a fried egg. Don't ask me, I don't know. And now we've sort of rounded a corner, so to speak. Actually, I mean, literally we've rounded a corner. You can uh, see some of the, whatchamacallit, you can see a diner, coffee shop, look out. It's a little sign that kind of shows you what's going on. The pillar is made of an octan barrel and we've got a really wonderful build for a, uh, what looks like an old van. And this is all underneath, the overhang itself is actually underneath the, the Book of Liberty. So that's kind of fun. Really, really interesting. This is some of the surfboards that uh, Chainsaw Dave has. He's actually got two different ones. They're both white surfboards that have just sticker detailing that show a skull and, I don't know, some wood and some metal, just some basic detailing. Honestly, neither of that sticker detailing looks particularly good, but they can't all be winners. Let's move up a little bit. And yeah, now you can see you have a better idea. There's the hand coming around the book. All the fingers, by the way, are posable, which is really, really fun. So you can actually have sort of the Statue of Liberty somewhat come alive. I think this just made the most sense in terms of having a build style. It made most sense to actually just have the fingers be movable and curve around. There's some more weapons here. This is uh, also the entrance, by the way, to the, uh, to the barber shop. And you can just see tons of ladders, kind of guard railing, little step ladder, ladder, guard, more railing there so you don't fall off. There's just, everything is connected. You can get a minifigure, I think feasibly, from anywhere on the ground to anywhere on the top just by using uh, the stairs and everything that is provided in here. Even uh, this lookout spot, you can see there's like a ladder that goes up and that's that lookout observation thing that we saw earlier. There's the no pants guy. Where are my pants guy? Boom, I don't know what else, I feel like I've hit all the major details. This was more of just a tour. I feel like more than an actual review, but I think, I think I've uh, said or shown off all the things about Apocalypseburg that I wanna do. Right out, so here is the set all together. Gotta say, I'm pretty darn happy with the way it turned out. I didn't find anything about the minifigs. I didn't find anything about the build particular design that I found flaws with. You know, this was really just a, a high quality build and there's tons and tons and tons of details. I haven't seen the movie yet, so there aren't like Easter eggs or some things maybe that I don't fully understand. Uh, so I can't really tell if anything's missing or if I'd want them 
to have included something that they didn't because I don't know enough about the universe of this set. But all I know is that this looks amazing. Uh, I thought the price to part ratio was good. I thought the minifigs were good. The build was really fun. There's lots of fun techniques, especially when it comes to the creation of the uh, Statue of Liberty. So anyways, guys, uh, this was a really, really fun build for me. I stayed up really late to finish it and I'm knocking out this review for you in the morning now that it's fresh. And I really wanna know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. If you've stuck around this long in the video, thank you so much for watching. You can always like or subscribe and we will see you next time at Brick Vault. Hey everybody, we just wanted to pop in and very quickly let you guys know that we've got ourselves a Lego web store. That's www.brickvault.toys where the instructions for these incredibly high quality mocks are being sold in PDF format, the revenue from the web store helps support us here at the channel as well as the designers who help make these awesome mocks so thanks again for watching and everybody that is www.brickvault.toys and uh, we'll see you next time at brickvault